Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Game Theatre Company video, we're going to be discussing the Steam Autumn deals for the 30th of November. There's actually some really good deals on today, and we're going to start things off with Borderlands 2, available for $7.49, that's 75% uh, off, or if you're paying in pounds, Great British Pounds, of course, that would be $4.99. I actually really like this title. I have got a first impressions of it up, so you can check that out. And Spoony Kipper on the channel has also done a couple of parts on one or two pieces of the DLC, so you can check those out as well. Um, this game also thankfully supports NVIDIA hardware physics. I actually really like this game, which is surprising because I didn't think I was going to. Uh, I'm not typically a fan of such a zany kind of humour. There are an absolute ridiculous amount of weapons combinations available, although not all of them are going to be exactly useful. Um, it does, of course, feature a kind of a quest-based system. What I'd recommend is if you're on the fence about it, is you could check out the first impressions, see what you think. However, personally, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer since the price is so damn cheap anyway, so I don't really think you can go too wrong with it. Next on the daily deals is Arkham City Game of the Year Edition, which of course means it features all of the DLC. It's available for 75% off, that means it's $7.49, or if you're paying pounds, £5 pounds to you, good sir. I actually love Arkham City. I thought the ending wasn't, well, the end, maybe hour of the game, wasn't quite as good as I expected. But honestly, you have an absolute huge free-roaming environment to uh, mess about in. I have, of course, several parts of this up, so you can check them out. It also supports NVIDIA hardware physics. Honestly, there's not too much I have to say that I don't like about this game. Other than, if I had to criticise it, I kind of don't like when you get caught by the enemy. And no, not because obviously I'm losing. It's because I kind of think sometimes it's a bit frustrating to have to lose the enemy. It's almost like you're going through the same motions again and again. Fortunately, some of the boss issues that were prevalent in the previous Batman, uh, Arkham Asylum, where you pretty much have to fight the giants and punch them a couple of times, wait for them to crash into a wall, aren't so big of a deal in this one. I like the game. I would recommend it. Price-wise, it's not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Next one, Splinter Cell Blacklist. This is available for 50% off or $29.99 if you're paying in US dollars or $14.99 if you're paying in uh, pounds. So it's actually a really good deal for us Brits. Um, I have a couple of parts of this available on a first impressions basis if you want to check it out. I actually was a huge fan of some of the earlier Splinter Cell games, although I couldn't get into Blacklist quite as much. I think it's because of the hub-based nature actually somewhat put me off. Um, for games like Splinter Cell, personally, I like to just being told where to go, and I like being forced in a direction story-wise. Now, I admit I didn't get super far into the game, and I do believe it's still good. PC version isn't too bad either. Um, it's by no means the best port ever. Some people have uh, experienced some issues. Personally, I've not, and I think everything's run pretty damn smoothly. Graphics are quite nice. Gameplay's quite tight. I would recommend you check out the video, see what you think, and, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, it's on the fence, it's not a bad price, it'll probably go down a little bit more, however, for Christmas. I, however, do think it's a good deal if you're into stealth-based games. Next um, bargain will be Forced. Now, it's available for 50% off, that makes it $7.49, or if you're paying in pounds, it will make it $5.99. I can honestly say that I've not played this title before. Um, I've checked out meta scores and so on, and it scores okay. It is a co-op, which could give you some entertainment value. I don't know that much about it. It looks kind of quirky. Um, but all I can say is that it scores fairly well, but it's certainly not the best uh, title on here. So, I uh, sorry, I can't be of any more help. Next one is The Witcher 2, Assassins of, uh, Assassin of Kings, if I can spit the words out. It's available actually for a really good price. It will be $5, that's 75% off. Or if you're paying in uh, pounds, it's 374, so a really good deal for both uh, regions. The Witcher 2, in my opinion, is a better game than 1. Before it was patched, it was ludicrously hard. 
the beginning section, I must have died like five times because I was like, what, what's going on? Help me, where's my medicine? I had no idea what was going on because it was my first Witcher game that I actually ever played. I played two before one. And the difficulty was quite ludicrous. I kid you not. However, they've patched it, fixed some of the issues, and it's still a really good um, RPG. It will be one of those games where you're either going to love it or hate it, though, honestly. I have some gameplay of it up, and I would recommend you check it out if you're curious. The graphics are absolutely beautiful. I'd say it's easily one of the best-looking PC games out there. It's very old-school, however, in terms of combat and just gameplay. It's actually kind of punishing. Apparently, Witcher 3 isn't going to be quite as difficult as Witcher 2. I'd still recommend it, however. I think it's still a pretty damn good game. Next game, Shadowrun Returns. It's available 55% off. Uh, that's $8.99 if you're paying in US dollars or $6.74 if you're paying in pounds, which is kind of an odd price, but there you go. I haven't personally played this one. I'll be completely and utterly honest. It scores fairly well on different websites, has an average Metacritic of 76, which isn't too bad. Quite a few people are giving it reasonably decent reviews, and it's generally recommended on Steam, so you could check it out if you so wish. I can't obviously have played every game, so, you know, I'd love to give you more of an opinion than that, but sorry, the best I can say is that it's generally well received. Next title, Total War Rome 2. Available for 50% off. That makes it $29.97 if you're paying in dollars or £15 or $14.99 if you want me to be exact. There's also 50% um, off one of the pieces of DLC. That's the Greek States Culture Pack. Uh, the other's a normal price. Huh. I'm not quite sure about this one. I personally never played the title, but... I can tell you from the opinions of friends and those who have, and as well as average Metacritic, right, here's the problem. There have been quite a few people who said it's an absolutely fantastic game, but there are some serious glitches with it. Now, they've fixed a few of them, or quite a few of them, uh, through various patches. So, it's better now than it was, but obviously the game's pre-release, in other words, well, the game's initial release somewhat dragged down its average Metacritic score because some people were basically saying the game was pretty much unwinnable or unplayable in some machines or in some situations. It would be not too healthy at all. Um, a lot of that's been fixed, but you may want to do your own research on this. I can't say that I've played it that much. I have a couple of friends who have, and they've said the game is better than what it was, but it's by no means smooth sailing. Next one, Amnesia, Machine for Pigs. This is available for $9.99 in US dollars. That's with a 50% discount. Or if you're paying with Great British Pounds, you're going to be expected to cough up $6.49. So not a bad deal. Here's the thing, um, there's been a lot of people who have spoken, uh, played this, and um, Amata on the channel has basically finished it, um, we got actually as a pre-release copy. Now, from what I understand, and she's spoken to me quite at length about this game, it is better in some ways than the original Amnesia. For a start, they've improved drastically the quality of the graphics expected, but it doesn't support mods anywhere near to the degree that the other one did. They have helped improve things by adding Amnesia uh, Machine for Pigs assets to the original, but still. Storyline, it's not bad. She said it's improved quite substantially in some aspects, but the major issue she had was that there weren't enough monsters. Um, she said that you kind of go quite a long time without actually seeing it. I think it's more you're kind of just touring around a lot of the time. So once you kind of realize that a lot of it's just atmosphere, I think horror games need to kind of a blend. It's still a very good game. And in my opinion, if you're a fan of horror and story, you could certainly do a lot worse from what I'm told. Um, you should check out maybe one of her videos if you're like on the fence about it. Next one um, will be Chivalry, Modern Medieval, I'm sorry, Warfare. That's 75% off or 6 for 24 if you're paying in dollars. 
Um, if you're paying in pounds, that's going to be uh, 474 Great British Pounds. I haven't played this one. But I can tell you that the amount of people who have told me this is an absolutely fantastic game is actually unbelievable. I would recommend that you do your own research on this. But general consensus seems that it's actually pretty damn good. It's actually genuinely recommended on Steam. Metacritic is saying it's pretty good. I haven't heard about any particular bugs or performance issues. The reason I haven't played it is because personally I just... I've had enough about medieval for a while. I've just, you know, I've played so many of them recently. But I have heard it's a pretty damn good game. So, yeah, go ahead and check it out if you're so wishing to. Next one, Flash sales now currently there's about seven hours so i might as well go into them serious sam free dead space call of jerez and max Payne. Uh, 90 percent off serious sam free incredibly good fun it really is i believe i got some footage of it on the channel um it's actually one of the few games as well you can actually play split screen on the pc and it is tremendous fun of course, one, one of you is most likely going to be stuck with key, uh, keyboard and mouse, while the other one's going to be suffering with a joypad. But still, very good fun. Would recommend it. It's, it's, it's actually chaos, I'll just be honest. Uh, when there's a hell of a lot of enemies on screen, especially the exploding ones. Oh boy, very good fun. Especially if you can play co-op with a friend. Um, Dead Space 2. Um... I actually kind of liked Dead Space 2. I know some people say it's more of an action game than survival horror, but it's still more survival horror than Resident Evil 6, in my personal opinion. Dead Space 2 is pretty nice looking. Uh, performance is pretty damn great on PC. Controls are tight. Honestly, I would recommend that you play the original Dead Space first before you play Dead Space 2 because the stories are pretty much intertwined. Dead Space 2 pretty much takes off, uh, picks up right after uh, Dead Space 1 leaves off. So yeah, you definitely want to play both. I have to admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for the Dead Space series. I know that some people have really criticised it and I know it gets slated for not being quite as scary as babies should be. I think it does rely a little bit too much on jump scares occasionally. But honestly... I think it's a pretty damn good story. The animes are actually pretty nice as well. Uh, next title. Oh, by the way, that's 75% off 4 dollars I'm not 100% sure if I mentioned that. Next title, Call of Jerez a Gunslinger. That's 66% off or 5 US dollars. Have done a first impressions of this. I actually kind of liked it. I was surprised because I don't typically um, appreciate Wild West settings. I think, however, it's pretty damn fun. Um... You're either going to really like it, or you're going to be put off by the setting, I find. Um, or you're going to find that the weapon, in other words, the weapons, uh, which are kind of old school. So if you're expecting lasers from Mars, you're going to be uh, out of luck. However, the guns feel quite nice. The gunplay is actually uh, quite tight. Graphics are reasonable. They're certainly not the best I've ever seen on the PC. But I have got first impressions of it, so you could check it out if you so wish. Finally... Uh, Max Payne 3. Um, it's available for 60, uh, sorry, 80 percent off. That's four US dollars. I actually really like Max Payne 3. I had some problems with it, primarily in that I find that it took control away from your character a bit too much with cutscenes. Some of the cutscenes were very frequent as well. Like, for example, you might have just one little section and then like 10 minutes later you'll have like another huge cutscene where you can't do anything other than watch but i don't mind that occasionally but i think they just did it a bit too much in max Payne 3 gunplay is as good as ever although sometimes you get a bit of a, a dodgy um ragdoll physics happening but overall it's not too bad weapons are quite nice uh, varied combat is pretty good although sometimes there are some really frustrating situations i will confess there was one or two parts that did kind of make me rage quite substantially checkpoints are reasonable graphics are good on pc version and also uh, performance is pretty damn decent i would recommend this title if you so wish to uh, play it personally i don't think for the price you're gonna 
do too badly. It was also one of the very first RGT videos we actually did, so you can check that out if you really want to go back into the mists of RGT time. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this whirlwind tour. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.